the sick, the handicapped, the departed, and the military personnel of this community. Thank you. Mike Palmer? Here. Bruce Gallagher? Here. William Henderson? Here. Joseph Colosimo? Here. Joseph Perdici? Here. Nina Petrusella? Here. Virginia Snyder? Here. Betty Coughlin? Here. Tom McDermott? Here. Gordon Collins is here. Uh, Gary James is in for the chief, but he had to leave for a call. Our chief, William Chilio? Here. Software GMS? Here. I've got to put a new name to that. Oh, yeah, but <laughs> One end. Here you go. Thank you very much. All right, uh, Council would like to recognize Mary Weiss. Thank you very much. Uh, very short one tonight. Um, I have a few questions. Hopefully, you can study and find out some solution. About once a week, one or two, three days of the week, depends, around 1 and 2 o'clock in the afternoon. I'm coming out Station Street to Washington Avenue, and what do I see at the red light? A Walmart. Not once, but usually once a week, sometimes twice a week. He's coming from the south, and he's going to the north to hide. That's for you to study, but it does happen, and the police have enough to do, believe me. Um, I also want to talk just quickly. Often when I'm sitting in line on Washington Avenue or Chartier Street, I know that somebody wants to make the left turn onto Chartier's. And I'm hoping that the borough persists in trying to get some action on that. These are people who live there, work there, pay taxes there. Uh, they need the same attention as we do. Another thing that I saw this week are two school buses going, thank God I didn't see any children, but two school buses going up Chartier Street. That is not the safest part of town. <laughs> I'm, I'm bringing it to your attention. By traffic there are little things, they could become big things. <laughs> but I ask permission to do this right now. If you knew that in the borough of Bridgeville, recently was found proof of a property, I'll say property, could be when they were building the house in the neighborhood. Um, but it's a 200, 300, no, 200 to 220 years old. Now, antiques up here on the avenue is 19, 4, 1840. The uh, Macmillan farmhouse close to me is 1864. This is before that. This is 1820, 1830 right here in Bridgeville. I'm asking, would you all like to take a guess of what it was and how it was found? Still no, you know. I know. Nobody knows. Nobody knows? I know I you do. The House of Hill Repute? <laughs> House of Hill Repute. You know there were a lot of those there when I was... I was like, my girl always said, no, they're down that street. <laughs> Anyway, that's the side Which house is it, Mary? Which house is it? What? Which property is it? See the address. It was very visible. Because I always thought that Wisman's house was the oldest. 220. Go straight up Station Street. There are two pillars that have taken you into the home. I think it was a Celtic family. The name of the house was Recreation. In 1820. The pillars that go up, that was tree on. Well, right beside that pillar was a tree that was so high, it was 220, whatever that is, feet, whatever. That's as part of it's still up there. I want to try to walk up there tomorrow, maybe between meetings, to see if the owner will let us take photographs. Which one is it? What? What house is it? Straight up. 
I know it's on the right side. Yeah, the number. That's Tornamini's old house. Mm -hmm. Tornamini's house is right there to the left. Tornamini's? No, I hear it did not. Tornamini's old house was right no, there to the left. No, this is on this side. That was uh, Alba Lucas' house. Yes. yes. That was Alba Lucas' time. house. At one time. Yeah. He certainly wasn't there. Oh, now, this is one of the <laughs> <pallet> things. <laughs> but to find something besides <laughs> Indian ornaments. Yeah. To me, it was very, mm -hmm. and of all things, it was the president of the library who called, it. and we all went up to see it. They scared taking it down. Thank you. Thank you, Mary. <coughs> oh, Friar. Is it yeah, just just a minute. What Mary said, uh, a little of a bit about Bridgeville. The, it's a very distinguished community with a great <coughs> history involved with the whiskey, whiskey rebellion. A heroic effort in those sequence of days when that happened, and I, uh, I just think we should make the town better and faster. Okay. Uh, I, I think uh, I have some other stuff here. I'm just going to give you a few later. Later, I will go through it. Okay. I, I showed you this before. This is Washington Avenue. This is the traffic congestion problem we have. Four lane this way. Four lane this way. This section is Washington Pike down the middle. It's a two-lane wide road. And we have Bowerhead Road, Lessonet Road, and uh, Major Road all converging in, into that same 1,000 square foot area. The traffic congestion, it, that's obviously the reason for traffic congestion. And um, uh, we have got to take emergency <coughs> actions to tell PennDOT and the county and whoever else can help us uh, solve the problem, to solve the problem, okay? Uh, we're, we're, we're screwed up. Uh, our own business district collapsed, obviously, years ago. South Face Business District stopped expanding until relatively recently. The Great Southern Shopping Center was sold at half its price, all because of the traffic congestion that primarily regional officials solved and we haven't been able to interest uh, PennDOT to come up with money to help solve it. I just want to show you that this, again, is a copy of the same plan that seven different city planners have given us. It doesn't matter if they were provided to us in 1969 or 2008. The principles of eliminating traffic have remained the same ever since the interstate highway was invented by Germany with Cloverleaf in 1937. Essentially, I just want to show you something. Bridgeville has got to develop a central business district that can compete favorably with the business district in Collier, the one in South Yet. And we can do it. Let me tell you some of the advantages we have. First of all, this is Washington Avenue, as you can see. Uh, Shady Avenue, the one that has been proposed by the planners to be extended. 220 yards is only a half a block away compared to all the other communities in the South Hills where it's a total block away plus steep uh, uh, walking, it's very difficult for pedestrian. If you think of, if you can visualize uh, Cannonsburg, Carnegie, and Mount Lebanon, if they want to, if, if a consumer comes through here, sees something that they want to stop at, for them to loop around the block, it doesn't, it, that option doesn't exist. This is an ideal position to create a viable business district. The other thing I want to point out is these red squares, uh, by the way, are areas, I'm, I'm here again, I'm assuming that if you do extend um, Shady Avenue to 220 yards, that makes it a three lane wide, one way street, and from the post office in this direction to Barber Road, the same thing you will double the number of consumer motorists that will go past our businesses and theoretically <coughs> double their potential income if they can see from where they're driving uh, parking spaces, empty parking spaces. And what I'm, what I'm proposing, I, I, I guess you've seen this before, this, everything in red here is 235 additional parking spaces that can be built along the uh, Shady Avenue extension. Plus, none of these homes will be touched. Uh, uh, some of those people were misinformed 
Uh, no, you're, or, there's a lot of property there, and there's homes that are touched. No, absolutely not. The, all, all right there, the we have 25 spaces, the house right there on the corner. Oh, this one right there? Yeah. Oh, yeah, you're exactly so, right. I mean, there, there's, you're talking about getting rid of businesses and tearing down buildings. Well, you're, you're going to have to determine. Oh, the, 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 I'm the, just, no, no, going, just the, yeah. we've, I know we've gone round and round with this, but. Well, let me, let me, correct, <laughs> let me correct something you just said. The fellow in this building, I've talked to him about this. They'd love, they'd love to have the state purchase the property. The guy who owns this building, which is the, would be involved in that left-hand turn radius, I've talked to him as well. As long as they get a fair return right. for the building, if you if you create if you saw if you increase the number of consumer motors on that street, the value of all those properties will double. Okay. Okay. Uh, but I'm just trying to think. Is there anything else? Oh, no, no, again, in terms of the, uh, I'll give you the, the written stuff. You can read it later. In terms of this being the solution to the Bridgeville. Uh, Flooding problem, the Serpentine Creek, eliminating Barger Road. I'm pleading with you, don't do that. The, the instability that I think one of the a couple of the councilmen mentioned of that uh, 200 foot long section of Barger Road, uh, sort of in front of the cement company, that's being created because, tell me, have you guys ever walked up and taken a look at the five homes that are right above that area? All, there's not all of the water from the roofs. Mm -hmm. The uh, parking, the driveways, and everything else, they aren't going into the drains. They disconnected them. They're flooding down over the hill and creating whatever problem there is there. But I was going to say, I'll give you some stuff that you can look through in terms of <coughs> that. First of all, I think you should, I don't know if the borough does it, if you can pass some legislation or if it would be a grandfather clause would protect the people from doing that. But the, the, all of that's. 30,000 square feet of runoff that's going down to the problem area. The bar, bar Hill Road does not have to be eliminated, but the Planning Commission chairman was told that it did. That's why he came up with this type of a plan. All right? And I'll, I'll, I'll give these things out to you. You can give them out later. Uh, Justine Summerly. I just have a couple of questions. One is, how to how can we get or will borough accept volunteers to help side the sweep the streets and find flowers and that? Catch me up. Oh, okay. Oh. <laughs> uh, that's um, there. There are, there are some people that are looking to to form a committee to do that. Yeah, because then you so. beautify Bridgeville. I know it's probably too late this year to do anything. <laughs> it's long. No, it's, okay. it's perfect time. It's perfect time. Right. And then the other thing that I have is there some sort of, I understand that we have a Republican Party here in Bridgeville, you know? It's like, is there a Democratic Party here in Bridgeville that meets? Yes. Where do, where do citizens find that information out? Ask me what you do. 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 We have a directory of. <laughs> we, well, we, we have a directory, but we don't have a directory of political, yeah, political, yeah. political um, things on the borough website. We're supposedly above politics here. <laughs> we, we, yeah, it's it's election an season, and we don't even know who's. That was just who's, an example, okay? Yeah. But I mean, you know. In, in years in years past, we've looked for candidates and everything. We put ads in the at that time it was Bridgeville News and everything. Right. And we always get zero response. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And, uh, I'm just. No, hey, no, we, I, we, I, that's I, how, that's why we've put it out before. Right. And it's basically word of mouth at this point. I mean, even trying to get volunteers to do something is nearly impossible. Well, here's a, an example. We ask the business owners to take care of. No. Some of the planners just to go out and pick up trash and that right. type of thing. There's one business that does it. That's it. So public works has to go up almost yes. weekly and do that. <coughs> when we had a uh, cleanup day for Bridgeville, yeah. we stopped because it was like yeah. 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 Was a Joe, council Joe, and maybe like three residents. Right. We did that for years. We most of them are 65 years yeah. old also yeah. came out to volunteer. Yeah. Just people wouldn't come. No, it was us. And right. another thing 
bridge fell, there's some little spots maybe to pick up debris and then or stuff. For the most part, it's relatively clean. Right. No, I'm just saying, you know, like yeah. when we get ready for the Memorial Day parade. I mean, well, you know, let's go up and sweep on. the streets, mm -hmm. you know, or... But if we do want to get a uh, room up bridge or an angle on again, penned up does provide the bags and the yeah. the and all that stuff. There's so. uh, neighborhood allies, or there's an organization in Pittsburgh that has groups that will come and help too. Mm -hmm. okay, how about the boys? We have the Boy Scouts and Girl Scouts, don't we? They Nothing don't in Bridgeville? Yeah, we have they them, do, but they don't. they don't come out and help with those things. Uh, the pit, the people from Pitt came out, they came out. Um, last year mm -hmm. and helped us um, plant the planters. They help public works. They came out on a weekend mm -hmm. and we gave them you know, materials and right. things to do and they helped us. But as far as groups within, we right. found that we just can't find volunteers. Okay. Okay. Excuse me, Mike. One other thing. Penda Bridgeville is not responsible for Philip for doing that plan. Penda is. Yeah, no matter what they tell you, I hear they're responsible for moving the traffic from the north to the south. I got you. Thanks. All right. Uh, before we get to the minutes, um, I forgot to mention we did meet before this meeting for an executive session for a uh, personnel issue. Um, and we'll get to the piece. Um, minutes. A motion to the borough council regarding the minutes of February 11, 2019, public hearing as submitted. So moved. Uh, Bruce Cavarucci. Second. And Nina Pritticelli. All those in favor? Aye. Aye. All those opposed? Motion carries. Motion to the borough council regarding the minutes of February 11, 2019, regular meeting as submitted. So moved. So moved. Bruce and Joe Fosmo, all those in favor? Aye. Aye. All those opposed? Motion carries. Uh, resolution number 2019-01, motion of the Borough Council regarding resolution number 2019-01, a resolution confirming that the Bridgeville Borough has formally requested a grant as designated an official to perform the required duties between the applicant and the redevelopment authority of Allegheny County uh, has authorized the execution and delivery of any and all agreements between the applicant and RAAC and has assured where applicable the provisions of local matching funds. In addition, the applicant will comply with all other provisions of the application. Uh, a CITF grant application in the amount of $234,666.75 has been submitted for the Warner Avenue retaining wall project. Make a motion. Uh, Bruce Carlucci. Second. And you know, all those in favor? Aye. 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 All those opposed? Motion carries. Uh, this isn't on your agenda, but I got a motion to authorize a manager and solicitor to request request for proposal for engineering services. I'll move. Second. Uh, Joe Verduzzi and Nino. All those in favor? All right. Okay. All those opposed? All those in favor? All those uh Yes. Oh. Is there any public? I'm sorry. Was there any public comment? All those in favor? All right. All, right. All those opposed? Motion carried. Thank you. Sorry for that. Uh, motion to appoint Lennon Smith. What's the last name? Sorry. Oh, sorry. Uh, for interim engineering services. So moved. Second. Uh, I'm going to open up for public comment. Mm -hmm. none. Uh, all those in favor? Aye. Uh, uh, all those opposed? Motion carried. Uh, motion for Solicitor McDermott to prepare and manager calling to advertise an ordinance regarding uh, regarding for the street or pardon, regarding street opening permits and street openings for the streets to be replaced curb to curb. Paper. Second. Uh, open for public comment. There being none. All those in favor? Aye. Aye. All those opposed? Some of you, excuse me, Mr. Chairman, you don't understand. Do, do you want 
know about this curb to curb. In other words, you deal with in others who tear the road apart in some place. They only fix up to the half or So the ordinance here, I'm sorry, Mr. Chairman, that to go to curb to curb, whoever may be distracted to those streets. So this will, many municipalities have that. The understand where we join the chain. Thank you, Nina. Oh, you're quite welcome, sir. Uh, motion for Solicitor McDermott to prepare and <coughs> advertise an amendment to the floodplain ordinance to require accessory uses such as dumpsters to be tethered. So moved. Uh, Bruce Calarucci. Second. And Virginia Schneider. All the um, open for public comment. And just by way of quick explanation. Our zoning, there's a small glitch between the two ordinances. Our zoning ordinance requires non-residential uses in the M and the I district to have dumpsters and to have them tethered. Our floodplain ordinance requires that accessory structures be tethered, but there are many things including dumpsters that are not structures under some definitions. So it's kind of a technical flaw. This is basically so if there's a flood event, we don't have 30 dumpsters in our creek. Yeah. Uh, all those in favor? Uh, uh, aye. All those opposed? Motion carries. Thank you. Uh, bill list. Motion to borough accounts regarding the March 2019 bill list. I'll move. So, Joe Greasy and Bruce. All those in favor? Aye. Uh, all those opposed? Motion carries. <coughs> payrolls. Motion to borough accounts for approving the payrolls of March 15, 22, 29, and April 6, 2019. So, uh, Bruce Galbrici. Second. And Nina. All those in favor? Aye. Uh, motion carries. Uh, monthly reports. Uh, motion to accept the January 2019 revised real estate tax collector report. I'll move. I know. Producey. Second. And Bruce, all those in favor? Aye. All those opposed? Motion carries. Motion to accept and pay any commissions due the February 2019 real estate Tax Collector Report. I'll move. Joe Brucey. Yeah. And Bruce, all those in favor? Aye. Aye. All those opposed? Motion carries. Motion to accept the January 2019 Financial Report. I'll move. Joe Brucey. Second. And Bruce, all those in favor? Aye. All those opposed? Motion carries. Motion to accept the February 2019 Police Report. So move. Uh, Bill Henderson. Second. And Virginia Schneider, all those in favor? All, right, all those opposed? Motion carries. Motion to accept the February 2019 zoning report. So moved. Bill Henderson. Second. And Joe Cosmo. All those in favor? All, right. all those opposed? Motion carries. And real estate tax refund motion <coughs> regarding the following real estate tax refund due to the change in the assessment as requested by. The real estate tax collector year 2019 lot block 255-P-103, the amount of $270.35 to Sims Property Incorporated. So moved. Uh, Bruce? I'll move. Who's that? Favor. Joe Bruce. All those in favor? Aye. Aye. All those opposed? Motion carries. Committee reports. I do Bruce. I don't have any reports. All right. Uh, finance, Joe. Uh, really nothing to report. We had uh, normal expenses this uh, past month, a few uh, engineering uh, expenses that we had uh, that were anticipated. Um, unfortunately, we still have $81,000 still due from 2018 uh, real estate taxes. So um, I think that we've already been provided a list and, and we'll, I guess, start, start looking at it and trying to understand uh, how we can go about collecting that money. Okay. Thanks. That's all I do. Uh, Parks and Rec, Joe? Uh, thanks. Uh, <clears throat> I guess some folks may uh, realize the fact that uh, we had an excess amount of uh, chopped down trees, brush, whatnot, down in uh, McLaughlin Park in the ball field. So the borough went and we went and we got permits from the health department to we were trying to burn these things off, which we did. We got uh, permits from the health department, and 
We've got a diffuser type device which was supposed to keep the smoke to a minimum. We got some complaints from folks up in Upper St. Clair that didn't like it, so they shut us down. We got a second permit from the health department. The health department was there watching things. They sort of said it was okay, go do it. And it smoked up again, so we got shut down again. So we are right now on hold, but what we're going to try to do is go out and try and locate a pretty large grinder and just grind this stuff down into mulch or whatever and we'll go from there. So that's an ongoing project. That's what all the uh, commotion is done at the golf and field down there. If you were down there, there's all kind of equipment smoke. Uh, the large reason we were doing it was to save a lot of money. Yeah, yeah, definitely. It was definitely a big money saver. Hopefully the grinder will still be cheaper than we looked into hauling the stuff away. It was pretty expensive to haul the stuff out of there, so that's why we were trying to get rid of it this way. Uh, so that's an ongoing process. Hopefully we get this grinder thing a little bit cleared up and we'll be able to carry on with future endeavors down at the park. Uh, we got a uh, community block grant for a total of uh, $36,000 for the uh, restrooms out at the Run Park. They were in need of work. They've been down there for a long time. And uh, got a $36,000 grant on a project that's estimated $45,000. So hopefully with the work that we may be doing in the ball field down there, uh, flood mitigation and the uh, another thing was, the next topic is we uh, the grant form of Hawker Run Park which has been ongoing for the last couple of years is still alive and the money will be there till December of 2020 so that's even if we have to do the work in the on the ball field we should she'll be able to get this the park uh, phase two of the uh, renovations down there completed and the uh, restroom is not at Chartier's Park, from what I understand, they're just waiting for better weather to start to work up on that. So that's that on the park. So, any questions? That's all I've got. Thanks, Jim. Uh, up the works. Uh, uh, thank you, Mr. Chairman. How much I saw our normal uh, maintenance of uh, uh, the area and the road and the trees falling down and Et cetera, et cetera. Uh, other than that, we, uh, we removed the snow, and it's, I can tell you that we are in the budget as far as the salt is concerned. Our border manager were another under ton, I believe, it, just, just in case. But we, we're in the budget. The winter's been mild so far. Let's hope it stays that way. We yeah. did. Okay. It's okay. over. It's over. Yeah, I hope it's over. It's right. Well, yeah, I see a couple of robins already. Yeah, you next, you it's 2019. Yeah, so yeah. right. So right. This year, right. So. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. All right. Thank you, Mina. Uh, Mike, thank yes, you. Thank you. I'm going to miss. I turned the page. Oh. I just spelled my notes. <laughs> Thursday of this week is the birthday of our mayor. I would just like to wish her a very, very happy birthday. Happy birthday. Happy birthday. birthday. Happy birthday. You have to ask. Oh, to ask. oh, so you said you said, she said it was a baby. So it's not a baby. Yeah, well, 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 she has a company here. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> 1934. Well, well, what the heck? <laughs> the, the calendar. The tells you it's <laughs> Thank you, Mayor. We here in Strong know. Absolutely. Not the days of God. All right. Uh, public safety, Bill. Uh, Mike, the only thing I really, I just wanted to thank Ray Aaronholz. He's worked with us uh, quite a bit on, on safety up in that area of uh, Bank and, and Winfield. And he's brought to my attention a program that PennDOT has on um, safety signs for crosswalks and things. So he and I are going to continue to work together and look to uh, improve that area up there safety-wise. So thank I wanted you. to thank him for that talk with me. Excellent. Madam Mayor. March is, of course, Women's History Month, so we're proud of all, <coughs> excuse me, all the women of Bridgeville Borough. 
and we welcome to the Planning Commission Justine Cimaroli. We're happy to have you making history for us future. Um, on Thursday, March 14th at St. Barbara's Church, Gary Frangioni will be speaking on Foundations of the Faith. They have dinner served at 6.30. Everything is free, so we advise you or ask you to attend if that's possible. On March 29th, the Solid Rock Revival Center on Dewey Avenue will be celebrating their first year here in Ridgeville. They're having a speaker from Boston, a Reverend David Stewart, and they offered an invitation for us to attend if possible. That's 7 o'clock on March 29th. On last Friday, I was privileged to speak to a group of women at the Bethel Park Retirement Center, a wonderful group of ladies, very talented women, some retired actresses from the Civic Light Opera. They had very interesting stories to tell me, but they wanted to hear my story about how I got to be the mayor of this wonderful borough of Bridgeville. So, and I hope everyone will have a happy St. Patrick's Day, and if you have a chance, listen to Elvis Presley's rendition of O Danny Boy. I was surprised at how beautiful it is. Thank you. Here you go. Very nice. Little so recommendation now. Sergeant James, you have anything? No. Just checking. <laughs> right. well, excuse me, Sergeant James, if you want to encourage people about the food drive. Oh, yes. We are. <laughs> <laughs> I, was, I wasn't giving any notes. <laughs> we are running a food drive that we, this will be our second annual food drive with. Uh, in conjunction with Collier Township, Scott Township, Heidelberg, South Fat. Um, last year, we raised the largest amount of food ever that was donated to the Bridgeville Area Food Bank. So we hope to do better this year. There's drop-off locations all over the place. They're here in the borough, at the police department, and several businesses in the area. Got a high bar to do. Thank you. Uh, solicitor? Yeah, you have my written report. That's uh, all I have in addition to the two uh, All right, thank you. Uh, Fire Chief Ochilia. Thanks, Mr. President. Uh, you have my report up there. Uh, there isn't, like I said, this is a new system. On the second page, you'll see, uh, to understand, is uh, mutual aid received, mutual aid given, which is us going out of town. And then the none means that we handled the incident in town without mutual aid. So that's an add-on to our report. And just a reminder, it's our fish fry this Friday. Mary. <coughs> so four to seven down the fire department. We're looking forward to it. We enjoy it. Thanks. That's it. Uh, Southbridge Damn North. Uh, thank you, Mr. Burke. We have uh, uh, subscriptions have gone out, so we would appreciate the support of the residents and uh, subscribing to Southbridge. Also, drop out some flyers for the top golf tournament, so you can make it out the 11th in the afternoon. Love to have you and you can play a little golf with us. Uh, historical Society. Yes, First of all, on March 11th, I'm sorry, March 17th, we will be celebrating eight years of Bridgeville Area Historical Society in that building over there. Before that, we were behind the post office, so we've been in business for 18 years. Um, tomorrow, the second Tuesday of the month, uh, again, John Euler is going to be talking <coughs> about George Washington, and um, hopefully next month I'll have some news to tell you, hopefully good news about that. Uh, Penguin hockey tickets are on sale as one of our fundraisers. Uh, the drawing is actually based on the state of Pennsylvania's drawing at 7 p.m. on March 22nd, which is a Friday. The game itself, for which we have two tickets, is at 5 o'clock-ish on Sunday, the 31st of March. And I just hope they win a lot more games like they did last night so that we don't have any trouble selling the rest of the tickets. 
Um, we have been exceedingly busy of all times, the end of February and into the beginning of March, particularly when we haven't had the very best weather either. But we've had visitors from local areas, Cannonsburg, up north of the city, Virginia, the state of Virginia. We've had two people come in in the past two weeks who are writing their family histories, and they're going to need our files for that. Uh, it's been one after another, which means time goes faster, and uh, we're trying to keep up with everything with volunteers, by the way. We need volunteers always. Um, I think that is it, unless somebody has a question for me. But we hope to see you all tomorrow, uh, because that's George Washington. And of course, then at the end of the month, I'll hand out to the public the other notices that we're starting with, um, let's see, it's uh, the one I never thought he would turn out to be like he did, Benjamin Franklin. Mm -hmm. He's the topic. Thank you very much. Thank you, Mary. Uh, Ritual Library. We should be approving our budget for uh, 2019 next, month, uh, next week's meeting. I also uh, fire here, we're starting to do fundraisers with local restaurants. We have one with Chipotle set up for the 25th, four to eight, we'll get 33% of the proceeds. We're going to try to work with local, organ, local restaurants every couple of months throughout the year to, it's an easy fundraiser, and just tell them from the original library. So I have some flyers here I can leave with Gloria if she, you know, as far as she be knows. Frank, can you say that today again? It's March 25th, four to eight, Chipotle. And it will, the Bridge Library will get 33 percent of the proceeds. Good. You have to say anything, or just just you have to say either um, represent from the come from the library or the flyer, or I think there's something on the Facebook as well. You can get a snapshot of that. Oh, this on our Facebook page. Okay. All right. Okay, that's it for one. I'll I have another item to bring up if I may. Sure. Last month there was a gentleman here from the Lower Chartres Watershed. Uh, he was here presenting one about us going to a meeting. They were having a kickoff meeting. Uh, my wife, Lori, and I attended the meeting. There's about 30 people. It was in Grenadine. The Structures Valley Lower Watershed is from Upper St. Clair down to McKeach Rocks. You may or may not know that. I did not know that until we attended the meeting. And we're getting good and involved on the 23rd. We're going to have an event over uh, Upper St. Clair. We're going to do a water quality a work, workshop from 9 to noon, I guess, of going in the creek and testing the water. So we're going to get more involved with that, and I can keep you abreast as far as what the oh. cleanup and so forth events that they have scheduled for Church District, since we're, yeah. you know, Church District is quite an issue here. Yeah. Right, so. Thank you. Oh, sure. Uh, parking board, really, parking um, planning. Do you have anything for planning? Nothing. Thank, Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Uh, Borough Manager, Lori. Um, I submitted my report. Anyone has any questions? Old business, new business. I wrote one thing. I'm sorry. <laughs> sure. So close. We're selling books. <laughs> but his, old history books. We have you mean about original or just history books in general? Yeah, we sold all the stuff on World War I history books. Okay. Now we're in the World War II history books. But stuck in class. Okay. Pretty soon it's going to be current event books if you get sold. <laughs> <laughs> All right, I'm going to motion with Mr. Jarn. Bruce, I'll second. Joe, you may all in favor? Uh, all in favor? 